Hola, welcome. This is Dino Delano. Today, uh, this video that we're creating, that we're working on, uh, is coming from Don Thani, which is in the center of Thailand. So I am Thailand at the moment. Kundalini awakening is the beginning to an end in suffering. Now, what does that mean? What are we talking about? How does Kundalini interact with the mind-body system? Keep in mind that the Kundalini process is not religious. It has got nothing to do with spirituality in that, that sense. It doesn't belong to a religion. We could use the word equally, chi, life force, or whatever. But we'll simply use the word Kundalini because it has an understanding to some degree. In simple terms, Kundalini brings more energy into the mind-body system when we open up to that life force. It's kind of like uh, unplugging from 110 and plugging into 320. Now there is more energy. And because there is more energy, there is more awareness. What does awareness have to do with the end of suffering? Suffering has to do with our perception of reality, how we perceive it. So if we begin to see reality differently, if we perceive reality differently, we end that form of suffering. Let's say it in simple terms and something that we can all understand. And by the way, by the end of this video, you will have a much more in-depth understanding how your mind, belief, body systems work. Many people have a belief in life after death, or some form comes through their religious beliefs, or whatever. But a huge amount of the world's population, not all, certainly, are extremely afraid of death. In America, we have, you know, cryogenic forms of freezing people. We, we uh, embalm people. We do all of these weird kinds of strange things in order to, in some way, preserve the body as though the body were the life force in the process of dying. In other words, even though we have the beliefs, we still have the fears, which tells us, of course, that our beliefs, then, are based on a what? Shaky foundation. They're not based on direct perception. Conversely, the individual who has had what is called an NDE, You've probably heard that term. In other words, near-death experience, they've gone to the other side, they have seen the light, so to speak. They begin to shift their perception, and that perceptual shift causes them to release and let go of their fear of death, because now they see more clearly. When uh, Charles Darwin was sailing around the tip of the Terra del Fuego in those huge sailing vessels, and they stopped there, they discovered something very interesting about the natives over there, you know, on land, is that they could not see their sailing vessels. Wow, so the, what they did is they put them in their own canoes, brought them out, had them touch the sailing vessels, and now they could begin to see them. In other words, their level of awareness, their perception, their way of thinking, their belief structures, whatever, did not allow for that perception. But now the perception, by touching it, feeling it, sensing it, brought them not into a belief, but into direct seeing. So what Kundalini does in that sense, it begins to get us to perceive, to sense, where we have blocks in our perception. When we begin to move beyond those perceptual blocks, we begin to not only see more clearly, it causes us a shift in our life experience. For instance, many people believe that in their relationships that their girlfriend or their boyfriend should make them happy. And if their boyfriend or their girlfriend does not make them happy, now they begin to do manipulative kinds of things. Sometimes they use fear. A man, for instance, might use uh, money in order to try to control his wife. The woman may use sex in order to control her man, and so on. So these manipulations of all kinds go on, but when the manipulations don't work, 
then I'm unhappy. When my manipulation of my girlfriend and she doesn't begin to act the way that I want her to act, doesn't do the kinds of things that I want her to do, doesn't act in a way around my friends the way that I want her to act, I become angry. I become dissatisfied. I become hurt. I be, and so on. I'm sure you get the point. But that same process is also true in the world process. If I'm living in a country that is communist, if I'm living in a country that is democracy, if I'm living in a country that is socialism, I want everybody to be that way. Because my belief is, is that our particular way of structuring, our particular way of living, our particular belief is good for everyone. And if everyone doesn't believe it, then I'm going to use force. I am going to use war in the extreme in order to bring that about. I am going to use uh, monetary um, manipulation, money manipulation, the manipulation of many forms in order to bring about this, this uh, structure and have everybody function by it because I believe it will save the world. If I'm religious, I believe that it will save humanity and so on. That form of thinking causes us to act in ways where we become destructive and manipulative, not only in our personal lives, but also in the large form. We can see this. If we begin to actually see it, it causes a shift. And that shift not only causes us to begin to experience less suffering in our own life, but it also causes us to experience less suffering in the world. Another way of saying it is, is that you are the world. Another way of saying it is that I am the world. We and the world are one. Our experience of continual war upon war upon war is our inability to perceive that we create more suffering, not only for the people that we perpetuate war upon, but also for ourselves. If we look at this uh, symbol that you see right here by me, it's real interesting that if you look at it one way, you see a cup to drink from. If you look at it from another viewpoint, you see two faces. In other words, perception. So perception then goes beyond belief. The expansion of awareness, the expansion of energy causes a change in our, not just perception, but also in the actions that we take within the world. This is why the things like Tai Chi, body work, meditation, yoga, all of these processes bring a change, not just in belief, but a change in perception, because evolution is not just a form of thinking. Evolution is not just a form of thought. It's not just an idea. It is not just a belief. It is literally a change in the biological process. And that biological process is often brought through a process that we call Kundalini. But that life change could easily also be brought through the process of doing Tai Chi, Qigong, movement, many things. So we are not, in that sense, talking about something that this is the way. This is the only way, not by any degree of the imagination. All right, thanks for being with me. This is Dino Delano. And if you will, go to a website which is called coolzenhealing.com and click on the book, Discover the Magic in You. There is a video there that will even give you way more detail than what we have touched on today. Thanks for being with me. Thanks again.